Okay, um, there we are, and we are live. So thank you very much for coming on the podcast, Robin. This is our second attempt, yeah. people listening, because the connection yeah. is down. So hopefully this one will work. Uh, for everyone listening, uh, obviously I've seen your Instagram. Um, I've seen some of the stuff you do. The uh, Obviously, you know, I'm guessing you do the cobalt therapy, getting in the sea and stuff like that. Um, yeah, ex-military. I mean, I'll leave that for you to explain. So, I mean, first of all, Tell us who you are. What's what's your what's your story? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's a long story, but uh, yeah, my name is obviously obviously uh, Robin. Um, I'm a Dutch Marine still. I uh, uh, recovering uh, recovering from PTSD. I did uh, around five tours uh, with the Marines, mm-hmm. uh, of which two uh, to Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, but the biggest story that I uh, had a couple of years ago is that it left uh, a big scar that I didn't notice. Uh, in the beginning but uh yeah exploded in my face again so uh and uh recovering from that and going to where i am now um i got planned uh doing five marathons in, in five days uh for mental health awareness because uh what i noticed during my recovery uh there was uh how we call it a taboo on mm-hmm. it uh talking about it and stuff like that so uh, yeah okay so the right for people yeah no, I because I, I seen that the, the 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 well the five marathons in five days and it's yeah it's going to be an incredible incredible feat. Um, I'm doing a hundred mile myself on the first of May, but I'm doing that in one day. But I, I think I'd rather do that than do the five marathons. Yeah, in then you're done. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the five days is going to be incredible, but uh, that's uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Actually, we we'll talk about it at the end as well. Who how can people can you know donate and stuff like that? Um, yeah. Let's start first of all then. Um, well, from the Netherlands. So, what part yeah. of the Netherlands are you from? Uh, I live now near near Amsterdam. Yeah, Holland uh, is not 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 that big, uh, but it's uh, yeah, everything is near Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I live I live. Uh, I, I just ran to uh, to Amsterdam uh, last weekend. It's uh, uh, 30k. Hmm. Nice. Twenty miles or so, something like that. Hmm. Okay, and. How obviously? Well, how old are you now? Actually, I, I don't know any of this. So. Uh, thirty six. Thirty six. Okay, and you yeah. did five tours in Afghanistan. You said, is that right? Uh, no, five tours for the for the Marines. Uh, with, with, of which two uh, went to Af- Afghanistan. Okay. Okay. Two thousand five and two thousand nine ten. So, so how how long were you in the Marines for altogether? Well, I'm still in the Marines. Um, ah. uh, for about fifteen years now. I went. Uh, out of the Marines for a couple of years to try some some new stuff because I was <laughs> I started when I was seventeen so uh, yeah um, yeah and to get some social skills. <laughs> I think yeah it's it's good to break it up, isn't it? I suppose like if you go in the military, you learn so many different skills. But then I think a lot of the guys from UK who I know have been in the military, they kind of go in like, like you said at a young age, but then they're a bit worried almost about coming out because they don't yeah. know. What, what they what they need to do you know how life is going to be you know after they come out of the military i mean if we take it back a little bit then so when yeah. you say you signed up at 17 yeah so before that you know what were you what was the main thing that prompted you to go into marines what made you go do you know what i want to i want to sign up to the military well it was from from a young age i was five years old and already knew from okay uh, not really the marines but i have to uh, join the army but i think it uh, um I was, I was uh, my brother uh, was schizophrenic and my younger brother had uh, autism and it was me in the middle and also a sister, but it was me in the middle. So the intention and stuff like that and the structure, it, it was it was not there for me. So when, when I look back at my childhood, um, which was fine, but uh, of course challenging, I was looking for something for me, mm. uh, something challenging, uh, looking for structure, looking um, to explore the world and just go out there. Mm. That yeah, the military we uh, uh, yeah, gave that, of course. Mm. Okay, and would you so that, that's that's interesting actually because there's a lot of people say you know it's the adventure you know you get to travel the world and you know that that sort of thing I think that you know, a lot of people say when they generally go in the military but like I think the yeah. having the yeah the structure and 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 the, the challenge as well is. is I suppose like some people do it. A lot of people do it for that reason. You know, even if they don't. It's, it's a typical. It's a typical thing. Um, um, 
if, if you uh, would shoot a, a promo for, for the military, then with a typical thing, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it would be, yeah. The, uh, I, I actually really wanted to go in the Marines myself uh, when I was uh, 16 or 17. So yeah. the Marines, I, I always wanted to go in the Marines, like you said, because of the, you know, the challenging aspect of it. I thought it's going to be, you know, obviously a physical and mental challenge, you know, not, not even so much because of the travel. You know, I think the challenge aspect is what, what enticed me. I think it takes like, some people, like you said, it's, uh, they, they do like to push, push themselves through those, those boundaries. I mean, yeah. I went into the military then. So, Obviously, training, I'm guessing, was was quite difficult. Like, what, you know, what, what, just run me through the first couple of years in the military and like what that looked like. Yeah, it was really uh, a shock for me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the, the idea, but but actually doing it was, was really a shock. But um, I thought you can you can compare our uh, uh, basic course with with the, with the course of the Royal Marines because we're a lot together and it's. Uh, a little bit of copy of that, but yeah, give it a Dutch uh, piece of sauce about it, <laughs> over it. Um, um, yeah, but for the first years, uh, just, just you're so young, so you just go in a sort of flow. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the basic course was really hard. Um, I wasn't that really that fit when I started. I just wanted to go and I, I <laughs> got through the first um, selection and then, okay, let's do this. Then the, uh, yeah. Then you start your course, and that's yeah, it's it's really uh, yeah, yeah, slap in the face. Hundred miles an hour. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you call it? Um, they say something, they explain it once, and you got to do it. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's a it's a roller coaster that uh, just keeps on going, and uh, and uh, yeah, after my, after I done my basic course and uh, and I was done, I uh, yeah got uh, my first assignment to go to uh, Aruba. So that wasn't that bad. Oh yeah, I've been to it. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. It probably looks it probably looks different from an army camp, but uh, but I suppose yeah, it could, there's a lot worse places you could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as, as a young guy, and uh, with, with some of the guys, I went through the course, so hmm. it was it was fun. But it, it wasn't what I um, um, really wanted because yeah, you get your jungle course and stuff like that uh, over there, but to uh, really uh, gain the experience for a Marine to do stuff and to go on tours and stuff like that. Uh, that's why you join. So, and that, that's uh, not where you're going to find a Aruba. It's a lot of uh, real hard work, but also a lot of relaxation. Mm -hmm. And um, um, after I came back from Aruba, um, I, I went on my first tour to Afghanistan for a couple of months. So uh, mm. yeah, that was uh, the first you, experience. Uh, if you could go back now, would you have still made the same choice to go in the military? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And yeah. uh, obviously, fast forward now to you know to, to, to you know to this day and age, and obviously the yeah. the whole experience that you that you went through in the military. I mean, five tours of Afghan, sorry, five tours with the two tours of Afghanistan, but five in the Marines. I mean, guessing like, is it is six months at a time? Is it something like that in in Afghanistan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. My, one of my my cousin actually, he he's done I think good few tours of Afghanistan with like the British army. I mean, yeah. how did you find it out in Afghanistan? Like in terms of, you know, obviously what we see through on, on TV and things like that, you know, I'm guessing it's, in, it's, it's, it's obviously a lot different from what actually goes on in the ground. And obviously the fact that when you're in, in the midst of it. So yeah, what's, uh, you know, what would you say about that? Well, with my first tour, uh, it was, we were uh, more in the in the northern region, and it was really uh, it was pretty easy going. We had some some stuff, some ID stuff, uh, improvised explosive device stuff, but it was it was pretty easy going. And then then people were pretty friendly, but but the the culture difference is mm. just you know when we see uh, when you saw a car there, and there was a, a guy in front steering, his kid, a son next to him, his goats on the bench, mm. and the wives were in the back of the trunk. In the trunk? That's, yeah, in the trunk. The trunk is open and the wives sit in the back with a, with a burqa on. And that was a first shot from, okay, yeah. this is the culture difference. This is, so the wife is less, the least important one of the whole family. <laughs> Even the goats go on, on a, <laughs> and it was normal there. And that, that was, okay, this is a different kind of world. Hmm. So that, that uh, yeah. 
spark something. Uh, and yeah, were, were they typically like respectful of you being there? Like, or were, was it kind of always there was a sort of divide and sort of tension? Do you think? Um, well, when we noticed that they really want to just be left alone, they want to just do their do their thing, and um, um, you know, since the seventies, they they've been to war with the Russians and after that the other guys and then came the Americans and then come the Dutch guys and they don't yep. for them it's it's uh, just a passing thing and then they're trying to get get the best out yeah but what uh, in the same situation I would do the same I think for, for me what's the best for me what can I get out of it hmm. and uh, uh, yeah most people are friendly want to talk to you and stuff like that uh, yeah hmm. so what was what would you say is your kind of what, what, what were your best memories of that? What were like, not, but not best memories, but what kind of lessons did you learn from, from out there, you know, from being around like a different culture, you know, what kind of, yeah. What, what lessons did you take from, from the way that they lived and, and things like that? Like, did it kind of humble you and, and or be thinking, well, you know, we're grateful. I'm grateful for what, you know, we've got in our countries, for example, or anything like that. Well, I, I was a young guy, so I thought I was a pretty tough guy. I just went to the Marines, so I was 20 years old, and I fought high for myself. And then, then you go from there, and you, you um, it makes you adapt to to uh, the, it makes you grow up at a young age, mm. uh, because uh, uh, it makes you think about responsibility. And yeah, of course, uh, we we see poverty there. It's, it's it's real when you come back in Holland and you can walk through the street and. Uh, Get your food there and get your stuff there, and you go back uh, to your place where you live. And, and you you have no uh, how you call it. Um, you, have to, you don't have to worry about stuff. And they, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah it, gives, it gives you a different perspective, I suppose. Then, isn't it? You know, when you're experiencing, like you said, yeah, you get you're experiencing the poverty, you're experiencing the different way of life. That that that's kind of why I asked really is because I think. You know, when when you get to see it, um, I don't know, in a newspaper or on TV. I don't think it does it justice from when you're actually there and you're speaking to people and experiencing it firsthand. So well, it makes you it makes you grow up really fast because uh, uh, when you go out, it, it's 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 for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds stupid to say, but you have a gun with you. You have you have your buddy on your right and your left. Uh, uh, things can happen, and then you're 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 so young, so it makes you grow up. And when you come back home. Um, the friends of my age uh, in, in the civilian uh, world partying, go on with life, and you come back and you just experience death, and it's, it's so it's two worlds apart. Yeah, I, I mean, we can talk about that now if you want as well. Like obviously, I think what you said, but there, the contrast between what you know, the life that everybody else is living over here, you know, and the life that you're living here, you're kind of expected, then I think to just slot back into this life over here but you've still got all of these different things that you've experienced throughout throughout your time you know when, when you've been away i mean obviously like, like you said at the start you kind of you know you you know been uh, recovering from ptsd yeah how do you how, how did you when you first come back for example but obviously if the first tour of afghanistan for example like how did you feel when you were like around people trying to almost be normal when things, I suppose, when things aren't always, we're, we're normal up here, if that makes sense. Yeah, then, then I, yeah, like I said, I was really young, so I, I just got on with it again. I was again, gone, uh, on my, uh, my mountain survival training and stuff like that, and I just went on and, you know, with the Marines, we were just uh, six to nine months of the year, we gone. Yeah. And you're with the guys again, and you're just doing your stuff. Uh, um, but when I had something to drink, uh, then the stuff came out like, uh, uh, why, why don't you understand me? And, and not being understand. And, and um, um, because you're so young, you feel yeah, you should be treated different because you did something. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you almost expect people to, to kind of recognize what you've been through. And yeah, okay. Yeah, but that, that's not how you call it. Um, um, what you should expect, because it's 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 ridiculous to expect that, but that's something that you, when you're young, you oh, I, I I've been through this, so you should respect me, right? Yeah, yeah I, 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 that's I, not I, how it works. <laughs> I, I I know exactly what you mean. I um, 
per personal example, so I owned a, a tattoo studio when I was 19. And it wasn't like I kind of demanded respect or anything like that. But like I did feel as though I'd achieved this this particular thing, which, you know, um, you know, I, I, which all of a sudden, you know, my confidence in myself changed and things like that. I, I did actually, I was very, you know, low confidence before. But when that happened, I thought, actually, I've done something here, which is, you know, pretty good. And like you said, it kind of puts you on that pedestal almost. But, you know, it's quite easily, you can get it quite easily be knocked off that pedestal. If like for in my example, obviously, the, you know, the business failed, so we, we shut it. Yeah. You know, when that happens, then all of a sudden it's the ego. The ego is like, oh, you know, well, what, what do I do now? And I say, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably quite similar to what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And then that... Um... Yeah, but just when you're so young, you just go, you don't really look back and you just go mm. from one thing into the other, into the other, into the other. So mm. uh, when you but now I look back, you, you certainly see uh, that you grow up just really fast and makes you view the world um, um, where, where uh, people panic or, or uh, stressed out about things. You're like, from <laughs> mm. what the fuck are you stressed out about? Because <laughs> What are you worrying about? It's not your life that is, is at stake. It is, mm. Everything's fine. It's not um, 50 degrees Celsius out there. You're not wearing a vest and stuff like that. It's relax. Well, what do you? That that's just a huge difference because when you're trying to make a connection with your your, your uh, city friends and stuff like that. Um, you're on a, net, a different level, mm. thinking on a different level. And that yeah collides sometimes. I know I really like the fact that you've said that because I think you know a lot of people the, a lot of the people listening um you know let's let's use you know the example with with the lockdowns and everything that's happened over the last year yeah um you know by all a lot of people have had really bad situations in the last the last year you know a lot of people have been struggling mentally a lot of people have been struggling financially and with their businesses and you know things like that um but by all accounts, I think, uh, you know, we, we've been, you know, the, it could have been a lot worse, uh, you know, in, in many, you know, many, many respects. And I think that's the kind of way we, we should look at it is like, you know, are you in a war zone? You know, is your life in danger every single day? I mean, chances are not. So when you, like you say, if you've had that sort of contrast, I suppose yeah. all of the, the different problems and the different issues of the world, they don't seem, uh, you know, as bad. I suppose you can look at them in a totally different perspective and a different light. Yeah. Uh, but you can expect people to uh, to to, uh, to know that um, uh, to know that because they didn't experience it. And that, that's a difficult part of it. But yeah. um, and it's okay to say uh, it's just fucked up to be in, in lockdown mm. and to accept that um, and then just go with the flow, adapt mm. yourself. And that and that's where people stop. They start. Oh, sorry, the connection, the connection went a little bit then. What did you say? Sorry. Um, I was talking about the people at home and that, that it's okay um, to feel that way, you know, because it, it is difficult to be at home. Um, only uh, sometimes you complain and you complain, you complain, and you get you get that negative five. Mm. Uh, but it's okay to complain, but keep moving. Yeah. Even this little movement, just keep moving. And whatever you do, if it's, if you just walking in and around your own, um, do the groceries, uh, do the dishes, simple stuff, make your bed, uh, take a cold shower, start start your day with a win. I, li I like that. Have you? So one of the things, I don't know if you've seen the video, there's a, like a US Navy SEAL, I think he uh, says about started, like making the bed every morning. Have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, obviously, that, I'm guessing that's something that's ingrained in you within the military, anyway, isn't it? But like that, yeah, yeah. like that, that is that's essentially the same principle, there, isn't it? You start the day with that one small win, and it, you know, it's, it's 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 basically even if you don't do anything else that day, you've got that one particular thing that you've done, you know, and you're going home. Then at the end of the day, you've got a made bed, and like yeah, that that just if you actually do go on to do other stuff, then. You know, you're pro you're probably if you started off with one little win, you're more likely to kind of progress then onto a few different a uh, few different other things. I, I know I do. When I start the day by making a bed, I'll generally have a much more productive day than if I haven't. Um, so it's quite surprising. Yes, yeah, very. It's like a little little mental trick. Like it can it can be a simple thing, you know. Because uh, when I experienced coming out of the PTSD and I was searching 
this, when you're done with your therapy, you're not done. You're, you're, you're searching for your new you. And, and I was waking up and feeling down, you know, this is what I'm going to do. So mm. I started to take cold showers. Mm. And I hate the cold. I hate it. But <laughs> I, I do it. And afterwards, I feel great. And that's a win. Or I do uh, 25 push ups in the morning. And I'm there. And that's your first win. And then your mind works on, hey, mm. I've won something. Let's go through the day, and you you start a more positive vibe. With the with the cold water, um, the cold showers. So I, I this is something I do as well. Obviously, I've uh, you know do the cold showers there. I, I can't actually have a hot shower. I'll have a hot shower, but then I'll I can't finish on a hot shower, Jimmy. I've yeah, got yeah. To, yeah, I've got to turn it cold, otherwise it feels yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, I mean, with that and the like, the cold water therapy and stuff like. Do you feel that that was something that aided in, you know, that your your transition in recovery out of PTSD, you know, or, or, or do you think it's like, how do you feel like it's helped you, you know, in your life? Um, well, when, when I, of course, I went through therapy for two years or so, and yeah. I didn't do the cold shower then because you're, you're so into yeah, therapy. Yeah. But I was getting to the end, I was done. I was not, I was feeling empty. I was, I was not done. I was not happy with myself. It was all right. I, I'm healed from from uh, the traumatic experience mm. uh, but but i'm but i'm not me and i just searching for all right how can i yeah mm. explore uh, more because it was it was a voice in my head saying all right do something uh, search the uncomfortable go, go for stuff and i just stumbled about a cold shower and thought those guys are crazy right mm. let's give it let's give it a try and yeah. and, and um and, and the, 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 the nice thing um, uh, I got from it, it, it made me calm. Mm. Uh, you think about nothing. You just think about breathing and the cold, breathing and the cold, breathing and the cold. And all your worries and, and uh, when you have PTSD and stuff like that, it, your mind is constantly, uh, uh, all the triggers and stuff is, is constantly hitting it. And when you're in the cold or you're in the cold water outside or in nature, you're just there. And then there, there is nothing to just calm me down. That's the biggest win. Yeah, it's, it's about presence, isn't it? I think one of the key things with the cold is it brings you to that present moment, like you said, because, you know, we're from a, from a biological standpoint, I think we're uh, we go into a bit of a survival mode. And, you know, you're, you're not, yeah, you're not thinking about anything else in that moment. You're not thinking about what bills you've got to pay. You're not thinking about... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, you're thinking about how, yeah. how are you going to get money for, you know, your holiday next year or your festival, you know, you're literally, you're just like, oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm fucking freezing on cold, yeah. you, you know, yeah. you're just in that moment. I think with, with what we've been doing, so obviously the, the wet band is the community I've got in Swansea in UK, um, we, we go in, you know, go in the sea, uh, well, every single day I've been doing every single day, most people have been doing, you know, a good few times a week uh, through the, with, yeah. with, um and it's been inc it's a, an incredible way to start a community so because everybody's at that kind of when you're in the water you're all in that survival mode almost you're all on the same yeah, way yeah. no but nobody's thinking you know oh, i'm you know like i don't know i'm richer than you or i've got a better business than you or i've achieved more than you you know just no nobody's thinking like that or you're not actually the other people are not looking at these other the peers thinking oh, you know, this person's more successful. They got a nicer car than me. They, they, do you know what I mean? Everybody is just in the same boat. Yeah. And it's an incredible way to, to build a community from, you know, yeah. from that, from scratch. Um, with, so with uh, going back to, you know, P PTSD, if you want to talk about more, more of that, I mean, for somebody who's like going through that right now, obviously, because you've kind of, you've walked that path, you've been through the journey. I mean, yeah. What would you? How did you recognize? Like, what, at what point do you, did you say, you know, I, I need to speak to somebody about this? Or what, what time? Do you, you know, when when did you think I need to, you know, I need to talk? Well, we were we were. Uh, and I, I was married in the yeah, I got married and uh, had a kid on Aruba. Uh, we were back in Aruba with the family now. Mm -hmm. um, um, different life phase, but um, the relaxation there and and just uh, I wasn't that busy there. And when I look back, yeah, it was already years. Uh, there was a peak and then going down, going down, and the line was going down. So I was in a negative space in my head and stuff like that. And um, and then uh, we went on Aruba and everything was relaxed and fine. And in some state of mind made it relaxed. So 
it gave the opportunity for PTSD to come, all right, now it's my time. You pushed me away long enough. Here we go. Hmm. And, and all shit came out and it started with panic attacks, hallucinations, uh, stuff like that. And um, um, at first you're like, oh, nah, fuck it, I'm a Marine. Nah, it's not gonna happen to me. Fuck that. Uh, you push, try to push it away, but it comes back so hard. And we went back to Holland to show a uh, little one to our parents and stuff. And I was in the city and just in the street waiting with my daughter and my wife was at the, at the grocery and um, I was standing there and, and the fear just crept right under me and I was wondering, right, any moment now there's an ID coming, I got to protect my child and in a totally different space and that made me realize this is not okay. Hmm. Um, and it, it shut me off. My wife couldn't reach me. I was protective, uh, aggressive. Uh, you do the stuff you, you learn because that, that's how you survive. Mm. And, and that, that made me realize that this is not living. Mm. Uh, this is not who I, am, who I think I am. And this is not um, being in the moment. Mm. So um, when beautiful moments happen, nothing happened with me. Mm. And, that, and that made me realize, all right, now you need help mm. because you can't fix it on your own. So, and then, then I went to the doctor and you get your yeah. things sorted out and you go to your therapist and yeah. How, how, how long did that? Yeah, how long did the journey take all together? About two years, two and a half. Two years. What, like, what kind of, obviously you, know, you, you talk about the experience and stuff like that. I mean, you know, kind yeah. of at what point did you start to, to gain some clarity about it all and think, you know, I'm starting to I'm really feel you know, feel better about everything now. I feel like I'm I'm on that kind of road to recovery. About a year or so, I, a year or so, I think uh, I was feeling uh, the little little sparks of uh, of happiness. I call them <laughs> <laughs> little little things that made me all right. Um, you feel more. Hmm. You feel me. Uh, feel feel more happy again. I knew it wasn't there yet, and yeah. and still the triggers came, and I was still uh, in fear. A lot of the time and I still had some panic attacks but um someone got used to it i feel yeah little sparks uh, yeah and then right just maintaining it then afterwards so obviously that's coming back to the you know the cold water and things like that you know you obviously that's that's just kind of amp but well, not amplifying it but it's just you know doing those little things that you can to to make sure that you stay in that good mental space and keep progressing and getting better and better isn't it yeah because, because when you win um of course, you got different. You got the, uh, I don't know if you call it over there, but EMDR, and you got exposure therapy and, and stuff like that. And that, that's that, that's really goes in your traumatic brain and the mind. But what uh, what I really suffered from was my body. Uh, my, my my body shut down. I mean, just for example, in, in Aruba, I uh, went for a run, mm -hmm. I ran 1500 meters, and my legs just said, "Stop!" Couldn't run anymore. It was done. My body just literally said, "All the stress was." I was injury after injury and after injury and after injury and after uh, my brain was sorted out, uh, more or less, uh, I went to a therapist that, that uh, focused on body and mind. Hmm. And um, he goes to the therapist and he's always, how do you feel? How does it make it feel? And why do you feel that way? And why do you think? And it's, <laughs> makes you, yeah, you get so tired from it. And hmm. I went there and she said, you're not okay. I can see that. Hmm. Okay, so I don't have to say anything. And we just went through the motions and, and some yoga exercises and stuff. And I really, the tension let go. And then, then, then when I came back home from the first session, hmm. my wife said, I, I, I don't know what you did, but you are going back because you yeah. know this, this works. Hmm. And so, and so yeah, when, and in the first session, then obviously it was, you know, talked a little bit, but it was like yoga and movement and things like that you did, was that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yoga moves, but it was uh, a sort of tension release therapy. Um, and I just lay, lay down and uh, they rolled the yoga mat and towel under my, my back mm. uh, on certain points and, and under my neck. And then I just had to relax full, mm. just, just full. And then, but fully relaxing is not something that, 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 you, that you do. Mm. Uh, because even my little toe had to relax and then yeah, came the shuddering and stuff like that and it was really uncomfortable mm. because something is rolled side of your back and you're like what the fuck you don't, you don't want that 
And when you really get into relaxation, it, it disappears. And the tension, you got shiver and stuff like that. And then really the tension just goes out of you. And then that was the, yeah. See that, that's apps. That's just, you know, obviously, when, like that's not something obviously I've, I've never experienced, you know, that sort of thing before. But I have, uh, you know, when I've gone for, you know, a massage or things like that, obviously, you get knots in your back and you get you know, tension yeah. in the lower back, you get certain, you know, builds up, build up of tension in different places. And, you know, I think a lot of people, they don't realize that, that, you know, they think it's maybe, I don't know, wait, something when they've picked, been picking up something like a repetitive movement or if they've been training and, you know, and things like that. But, I think a lot of well, like you said, the majority of it comes down to the just the amount of stress that we're having, whether that's like a physical stress or an actual mental stress as well. So the, the different things that we've experienced, the the, the trauma uh, stores itself in the body, and that, that was a thing that we forget. Trauma stores really stores itself in the body, and then we're focused the therapy really on the mind and the brain and what it does and stuff like that. Hmm. And and but we so we forget the body. Mm. it's, it's uh, the body will not follow and of course it, but it's a coercive thing yeah so with, with, with all of the different things that they did then so do you try like acupuncture or acupressure or anything like that uh yeah yeah i went to a physio uh, i tried a lot of stuff because mm. uh, yeah my body wasn't feeling fine so uh, i went to a physiotherapist and he just made the tension in my in, uh, in my muscles go away sometimes you know and stuff like that just to keep me uh, going yeah, but it wasn't the real stored trauma release that, that came with with uh, uh, yeah with the therapy I spoke about here. Okay, and, and what would you say? So the therapy in itself, obviously the process, like you said about yoga. I mean, what was what were the what for someone listening now who's maybe going through the same sort of experience? or they going through a lot of you know kind of stress? Yeah. I mean, what were the key things you would feel that you felt like helped you in terms of recovery? So obviously you mentioned about, you know, yoga being, you know, yoga and that type of, the type of movement and stress release yoga that they, they done for you. I mean, what, what other sort of things do you feel like people could try out if they, you know, if they're experiencing like anxiety or, or, or like want to release trauma and things? Um, well, I, I'm not an expert at that. I only talk of only experience, just from, of course. Personal, yeah, just from personal experience. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and and, and um, well, the first thing I did um, uh, because we have to go back to Holland from Aruba. We, we were living on Aruba, but the, the therapy could only be done in Holland uh, mm. because there's a military uh, uh, hospital there. Mm. Um, and the first thing I came back, I said to my wife, um, every morning, six o'clock, I'm going for a walk. Mm. Every morning, and that's the first thing about structure. I have to get up in the morning, but I can't just um, get up, get coffee, uh, get the conversation started. I have to, you know, because you don't really have to sleep. You, you're, you're restless. You wake up during the night. And if, if you, that state of mind, if you, you, you get up and you just go again in the day, um, yeah, your, your day is going to suck. So the first thing I did, six o'clock, going up, going out, going for a walk, 2K. 3k stuff like that mm. just to clear my mind sometimes with music sometimes not I came back and that, that was my first thing my own therapy i thought of this is what i need mm. um after that after i, I went and, for the, the, and i keep doing that and um i went to the therapist for my brain of course uh um the psychology uh, part uh, but i also knew I always uh, worked out, but my working out was destructive, hmm. uh, what I did before. So I knew I had uh, needed some guidance. So, so I uh, went to the military rehabilitation center, I think they call it. Uh, and then I went over there and, it, um, and I always loved running, but it had become a really destructive kind of running. It was only <laughs> harder, faster, longer, uh, always negative when I came back. Mm. I told um, uh, the instructor there, I said to him, you know, I can't go for a run, but <laughs> it will go the same way. So he told me, all right, I got a task for you, a mission. You have to run 1,500 meters, but you have to do it in 12 minutes. Mm. I was like, fuck it slow. Mm. I'm, I'm a marine, and I, I, <laughs> I can run as hell, so, mm. right. 
they're going to do. So I didn't understand what, what he was trying to prove, of course, in, in first. But then I did it. And I, like 700 meters, I got in the flow. And I came back in 10 minutes or something. And I said, OK, go again. I'll try to hit the 12 minutes. And I enjoyed it. And that's, that, that became part of my structure. I started running again. Hmm. And, but in that same pace, at slow, slow pace, just, just for relaxation. And um, keep doing that. And after the therapy and stuff like that, um, I started uh, uh, yeah, looking for how to improve myself even more, how to uh, get control over this thing yeah. instead of uh, always uh, have to react on it. Um, it's okay to, 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 to let it come in sometimes, uh, but I want to be in control. Mm. And that, that made me, uh, yeah, I, uh, I saw the internet and stuff like that, and it called Water Experience, and I came uh, to see uh, Wim Hof, mm. uh, the Dutch guy, the Iceman, mm -hmm. and uh, just boom, did his course. And then the briefing stuff like that, that, that really helped me in, in, in these parts. So you, you've done this, you've done the Wim Hof course then, have you one of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. The fundamentals, yeah. Ah, amazing. Yeah, and that, yeah, and that, that really helped me, uh, uh, the briefing stuff and, and uh, yeah, to, to, to relax and also release some emotions and stuff like that. It's really, uh, I didn't expect that uh, <laughs> um, to, to happen, but, but, but it happened. And, and but I was like, right, it feels great, I, I can do it myself. The breathing is actually, I mean, for anyone who's, who hasn't tried it, it's, uh, it's, it's it's quite phenomenal how you feel when you've done the breathing technique. Like, I mean, yeah. you don't think that you can access like that kind of a, I don't know, that sort of physical state, mental state, like, you know, the place it takes you to is kind of, I don't know, it's, it, it is, it's amazing. Like when you do it, you there's a visible change in your, in your energy mm -hmm. levels and your mood and things like that. Even if you're, even if it, you know, the science is, wasn't there for it, the physical kind of, where you feel that that's enough, do you know what I mean? Because you actually like it's yeah. a good way to start the day, it's a good way to end the day, or you know, or if you want that extra little kick of energy, for example, I started doing it instead of drinking coffee at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't replace alcohol. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> Beer in this time is okay. So with the with the fundamentals course, then so I mean, with it, if we talk about the Wimmer thing, I actually I didn't know about this, so. Um, Obviously, you cover you cover the like the breath work and the I'm guessing the cold therapy as well, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what kind of like just a quick run through of that? Like, what do they they say when you're doing the breathing? What sort of you know how do you go into it? And you know, and also with the cold, how do, if somebody going you know wants to go into cold water, what's the kind of appropriate way of doing it? Um, yeah, they, they they start really really slow. They 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 start start with a cold shower, fifteen seconds. Next week, thirty seconds. Next week, uh, forty five seconds. Next week, one minute. Hmm. And then they build, and then after that they say, all right, if you're going into nature now, you're ready for it. But take care of the, these and this stuff. And it's just, it's just. I think the biggest thing is just being open minded, hmm. uh, and just do it. Hmm. And then that's that's what people. They do it, or they, they, they don't really uh, do it. They try, all right, I tried the Wim Hof thing, it wasn't for me. Mm. Uh, I, I, I didn't think it was for me, uh, but I was trying, I was looking for some new stuff and then it, and it worked, so I keep going, keep doing it. And that, um, and yeah, how do you start something? People uh, usually don't start. Mm. The, the start is the biggest thing. They talk about starting, but they don't start. And that, and once you start, that's the hardest part. Hmm. Then it's just keep. And you know what? I that you 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 bang on there, right? Because funny enough, I was speaking to somebody earlier on who's who's wanted to try. You know, he's, he's said to me, he's like, I oh, you know, I want to come, I want to come down, I want to get in the you know, see and try it out and things like that. Um, but he's he, he, he's he's a bit afraid or a bit like apprehensive about going into the into the sea initially, you know, about you know, because about cold and it's and stuff like that. And I said, look, you know, it's it is cold as long as you like do it gradually, <laughs> things like that. You know, you can uh, you, you're not you're not going to die. Do you know what I mean? You, you're going to no. be okay as long as you're careful about it and you know, sensible. Um, yeah. But you know, like like that, what you said there about starting so once he the, the initial thing you know he hasn't had that experience he's thinking like oh how bad is it going to be you know when i try it yeah. it's going to happen once he's actually gone and done it 
you know, he's going to go, oh, he's either going to go, I fucking hate that, I don't want to do that again, I didn't feel out like, good from doing it. But chances are, it's going to be more like, do you know what, I've tried that, I actually really enjoyed that, I felt good after it. It was cold, yeah. but I will not do it again. Um, and I, I, one of the things that, like me and some of the group have done, so I, from October the 26th, I said, right, I'm going in the sea every single day of winter, you know? So I went from October the 26th right the way up until March the 20th, which was like two days ago. So every day of uh, British winter. Um, yeah. I think I'm on just shy of 100, yeah, 140, 148 days today it was, I think, altogether. So like, that for me now, it's, it's easy, right? Because I started yeah. it, like you said, and it's just... All, all I had to do then was just go, right, there we are, personal challenge. I want to set this many, I want to do this many days or whatever. And it's, it's become habitual now. And also because of the community. Yeah. Yeah. So, for, so for somebody listening, I mean, like if you want to, tr- yeah, like you said, if you can just make that initial, you know, thing where you go and start something, you know, and you just give it a go. Like if you can find a community or build a community around the thing you want to be doing more of, let's say it is sea dipping or let's say it's, I don't know, football or, or just running, for example, you know, join a running club or join a sea dipping club or create your own, you know, because if you've got that community, it makes it a lot easier for you to keep going, you know, because you've got the accountability, you've got the, you know, the community element of it as well. Um, and and also like set yourself those little personal goals not ones that if you fail you're going to be gutted if you don't kind of achieve them but also just those little ones those little personal milestones that just make you feel feel good and and kind of keep you going so like the, the consistency of the season, <clears throat> some days i just really didn't want to do it but when i went and did it then i felt so much better you know it was yeah. you, you feel good about doing it and i think if you can find those particular things it, even if it's nothing, you know, even if it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like doing 20 steps in the morning. Or something, but, you know. it, 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 people ask, ask about, um, um, want to do it because they, um, subconsciously, they, they want to change something about their lives yeah. because they, they, they want to do something different. Um, but it, it's fear that, that, uh, that, that brings them back. Uh, but if you surround yourself with people that already do it, so the community, hmm. um, then that fear disappears. Because people do it, they, they yeah, you can go along with them, and, and that yeah. But if you surround yourself with the same uh, environment, the same people, and you do the same stuff, you 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 just get stuck in that same. You will never start. So you have to get out of that and and go in another community, and then you will see the growth because people want to do it. Have you, have you ever had to do that in your life? Can you think of a time where you've had to do that? You know, like, for example, you know, if it's in the military or just like friends from, you know, from when you were younger, for example, like, you know, a group of friends where you've had to go, do you know what, these people are, you know, not that there's anything against them, perhaps, but like, you know, when you know that they're not beneficial to where you are right now or that where you want to be going and you've had to kind of take, you know, take your things and leave, do you know, have you ever had to do that? That you can think of? Um, yeah, not, not, Consciously, uh, because I went to the military, I had my friends, my friends were saying, uh, don't do it, and then and stuff like that. Do, uh, go, go do the things that we do. Uh, not a conscious thing, it's, it's your drive, so you, you mm-hmm. just go to, to another. Um, but uh, I'm always, uh, I went out to the Marines because it didn't fit at the moment. And that's um, um, because the environment I was in it wasn't, it wasn't a good environment for me, and it wasn't an environment that, that could stimulate growth mm-hmm. uh, for me at the moment. So I said to myself, all right. Now it's time for me to go and try something else and then and, and get some new skills and just go into the deep. And then I went, I, I went to, to become a fitness manager and, and did that for a couple of years. So it's totally something different. Uh, um, yeah. And, and now um, doing what I'm doing now on Instagram, hmm. um, uh, that always, uh, that, that, that set me, uh, sets me apart because it's, it's not, common to do such a thing and it's not always um, uh, been uh, looked upon as, as, as a good thing to, mm. to, to say the things I say and then that's uh, setting yourself apart um, from the group you were in. So I mean with, with do you, oh, I'm get, I know this I know the answer to this already but the stuff that you put up on Instagram you know, you've had you've had good responses you've had people come like message you I'm guessing and say look you know yeah. I, you've really helped me or this is you know i've really found this beneficial or it's resonated with yeah. me 
yeah you know and, that, and it makes it worthwhile then wasn't it when you're doing it isn't it i think sharing your journey is so important and that, and you know what this is this is pretty much the exact reason i set up this podcast you know to speak to you know people like yourself now you know so you can get that story out there and even if it changes the life of one person or if it positively impacts just one person that, that yeah, that's, that's, that's what's starting the journey yeah. yeah yeah because i, I said to my wife uh, um I don't. Um, I wrote. A, I wrote a piece about it, and then gave it to the um, the general of the Marines uh, because I just emailed him, <laughs> and he said to me, "All right, let's meet up." So I was a little bit, uh, "All right, let's do this." Um, I wrote a piece. Um, how, how do you say it in English? Um, um, the factor of happiness shouldn't be luck. Okay. Happiness should should, should shouldn't be uh, uh, determined by luck. Is this more? Uh, yeah. And, and I told him about it because um, so I have the luck uh, to, to, I can uh, describe things, I can uh, tell them in a certain way, I can tell my emotions in a certain way. But we Marines and military men are not selected to <laughs> do such a thing. Hmm. And that's why a lot of people struggle. And I wrote down, uh, uh, um, yeah, it's just to, to, to um, just to, to, yeah, to start something in that way. And, and um, after that, I, I started, of course, the Insta Instagram stuff. Uh, just just uh, if one person, um, I said to my wife, if only one person is helped, hmm. yeah, then, then it's a win. Hmm. Uh, they don't have to feel the same uh, loneliness because I had nobody to talk to. Hmm. And nobody, I just had a therapist to talk to, my wife, the doctor, uh, the stuff like that. And then, of course, when, when I uh, talked to a buddy uh, of mine, we went on the same tour, and you talk a little about it, but um, people don't understand, and I don't blame them that they don't understand, hmm. uh, because we don't talk about it. Yeah. We don't no, talk I, about I, talk, shit, talk. and that's the, that's the biggest win. Yeah, t talking about it is so important. You know, like you said, it's so many people don't. Uh, it t typically, a lot of blokes as well, because it's the pride. And uh, like I like what you said, yeah. you know, you've said about the you know the being in the Marines, you're almost expected to be, you know, this particular person. And you know, almost if you if you, if you're saying oh, you know that, it almost feels initially as though you're showing weakness when it's not. You know, it's actually yeah. showing strength. You know, it's, it's showing strength that you've got the courage to come out and say these different things and and step just step out of the mold a little bit and uh and and, and what yeah. you've done is great like i said with the instagram it, with everything i've seen on instagram obviously the the you're putting out there useful content for the people who have you know listening obviously go follow you first of all because obviously the content you're putting out there is really you know, beneficial it's useful for people who not necessarily have been in the same situations as you but who have, have struggled with mental health in general you know and i think that's the same thing like ptsd is obviously just one one part of like the larger thing, which is mental health awareness, yeah. mental health conditions, isn't it? Yeah. And um, obviously, I I haven't I haven't experienced that myself. I know people ha who have, but like you said, you can. There's a lot of lessons to take from that, and it, it's great what you've done, which is sharing your journey. Um, I can I ask as well the Instagram name? So five five out. Yeah, five five out. Yeah. What? what um, is yeah, it's, it's uh, got a communication uh, background, so. Um, uh, with antennas and stuff, that sort of communication. Um, and um, um, when you say uh, a radio check, a radio check over, uh, you say five five out. And it means I understand you clearly, all is well. Uh, uh, and that and that made me uh, think about it because I was on a, on a long run and I was thinking, well, how can I do this? And that popped into my mind, and I thought, all right, five marathons, five days, five five out. This is the connection I was looking for. Ah, right. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. I was wondering, I knew, it, I knew it was some sort of like, a, well, I guessed it was some sort of like radio command, but that's, I like that. The fact that you've tied it in with, with the, you know, the marathons as well. Yeah. And so you're doing these on the, is it the 5th to the 5th to the 10th of June? Is that right? Uh, 18th of June to, to the 22nd. 18th to the 22nd. All right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. With, um, so we, we, if people want to donate and stuff like that, obviously, what's the what 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 are you raising the money for and and things like that with that? 
Um, I'm raising money for 40 organizations that um, support people with uh, PTSD. Okay. Um, when one is survivor, uh, they go uh, surf with people and people uh, with PTSD, they can uh, uh, they go over there in the weekend or something and they surf. And surfing is uh, uh, yeah, going in the water and just relaxing and, and, and going on the wave. And that, that's uh, what inspired me. Um, the other one is uh, PTSD uh, I call Foundation. Mm. And they take uh, the family also on a trip uh, just to relax. But that was uh, something um, what I suffer from also. It's, it's your family. The impact is so, you always, PTSD, they focus on the person. Well, yeah. it's about Robin and Robin is in a bad state. But my uh, being affecting the family, that my wife had it it's so hard mm. being, being cut off. From, mm. from from the, the, the person you love. And, and then they, these guys, they also take the family with them. Mm. And the other one is uh, um, the commando family and sport. Mm. Um, and they uh, support also the family and they uh, operate out of the uh, defense system. The defense okay. system is really with all the bureaucratic stuff and it, it works, but it takes a long, long time. And they operate out of that system. So if something they, happens- they a bit quicker and get yeah it. quicker they just um one of the operators um had, a, had an illness something and lost his car lost a lot of money they bought him a new car here now you can drive again mm. and figure it out later mm. that's a, that, that's some some quick action that that those three put them together and raise money for them Ah, oh, that's that's good. Awesome. No, I'll, I'll link all of the all of the socials to the uh, you know to the podcast afterwards. I mean um what I was going to ask you as well, I mean, what's the, we're, we're, obviously, I, I, I know I pretty much know the answer, but I, I, well, I think I know the answer to this. So what's your, where <laughs> do you- Something is the mother of all fuck-ups, eh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to say, where do you, where are you planning on taking what, what you're doing now? So like, what was your future plans? You know what I mean? What, uh, obviously, yeah, you're, still yeah. in, you're still in the military. Like, what's your, your kind of your long-term picture? Do you, fa- are you going to stay in the military for, you know, many more years? Like, have you got a kind of a trajectory where you want to take, um, or would you like to go maybe in- I mean, I'm in a good space now, so so that, that's that, that that's fine. But but this um, this this five five out, it, it, this happened, and I just went on a positive flow and got on it, and then put stuff together uh, along the way. So so I don't know where it ends. Uh, of course, with with five mar- marathons, but <laughs> well, I mean, with you, you you in general, not not not, not yeah. just not just the challenge, but I mean, like obviously, yeah. like, do you, you know when you carry on now are you going to keep going like obviously they still stay in the military for the time being like but what's would you ever want to go and like set up an organization doing something that helps people or working in one of those organizations have you like what's your yeah. kind of trajectory in that sense but, but my, my biggest goal now is is, is, uh, is the mental health uh, and, and and of course i'm raising raising money but i'm also raising awareness and and the biggest uh, win i think is, is to, to keep pushing that mental health and to keep um um and and how, how do you call it? Not not under what what um, removing stick the stick. After, after, yeah, but often what you see is is is, is the uh, and what what the what the media loves is is that is the guy that is all down and out and and and, and or, or the pussies hmm. and that 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 won't uh, uh, yeah how do you call it? It's hard to say, but but I want to give that other uh, view. But it's okay. Uh, but you don't yeah. have to be uh, a pussy about it. It's okay. It's just yeah. okay to talk about it. And 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 well, what, what my end goal is, I hope mm. one day that we can say um, uh, when we go to uh, uh, a physio uh, for our leg is broken or something, or or, or to a doctor, mm. we just talk about it. Yeah, the same thing should be when we go to. Uh, 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 for, for our mind, for our brain, we go somewhere, just could talk about it. it you know, that's the same thing. That's a, I, I really like that. The, 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 you said when you go to a doctor about, you know, your leg or things like that, like it is just a condition or it's an injury, you know, whereas like you said, I think when people look at it, you know, like look at the, the mental health aspect, you don't think of it like that. It's almost seen as like, oh, you know, I'm, you know, my, my, my I don't know, I'm mentally weak or something like that. That's almost what people start to think. But it's like, yeah. you know, you, you can be injured. You know, I think it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Everybody is injured every now and again. And it's like, you can injure your knee, you can injure your elbow, 
you can injure your brain as well like not just from an impact with something but like experience so an experience yeah. had, like you said obviously you know with the trauma from either being in Afghanistan that sort of thing that is like you put your brain is going through something your mind's going through something it, it, you know it's injuring it almost it's taking it that little bit of time to, to to process it and to deal with it in a different way yeah no I, I really like that awesome it's, it's, uh, that, that's the goal to, that, that we um, that we change our culture hmm Okay. Change, would, change uh, the, we, we, the things we do, and then and the more people will uh, speak out, so so that other people that are sitting at home or or are afraid to that, that they um, when I do it, they think, oh, fuck, a marine does it, and not not, not um, I'm still humble in it, but I know what the, what the effect is because I experience it firsthand from the guys that I talk to, hmm. um, guys from my tour uh, that I talk to. So um, that made me realize. Uh, if you go out and talk about it, um, other people also talk about it. And that's the that's the beauty of it. And I hope along the way uh, I get a lot of people on board, and that it, yeah, that the quiet people at home are looking at it and, and sitting down and saying, right, it's 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 okay to feel this way. Mm. I'm okay, but but it's okay to be not okay. Mm. No, I like I like that, and I I know full well from people you know, when people listen to this. There's good, you know. I I know for a fact, you know, there's going to be messages, uh, you know, on social media, both to, to me and more, you know, and to you as well, about like some of the stuff that you've talked about today. Because I can guarantee that you know a lot of people are going to take some really positive messages away from it. Like you said, just because of the experience you've had and and also how you've dealt with it. Um, you know, I think it's so so important that yeah, people talk about it. You know, whether it's to a friend or whether it's to somebody like in a professional sense. Like you know, get get in that. Like, like removing the stigma for you know for example like realizing yeah. it is okay to have a chat with somebody about it and, you know don't if you think that your friends are gonna take uh, not, not take you seriously you know ch chances are that, that they, they will take it seriously you know i think there's a big culture for it now but if you're really that mm -hmm. like you know speak to somebody in the street speak to a doctor speak to some somebody who's going to really listen and take it on board you know generally family members are going to be you know are like that as well so i think a lot of the time people think they haven't got somebody to turn to um you know but there, there are there's a lot of people out there who will listen you know it's just it, like you said it's just making that start it's that initial speaking up in the first instance yeah. and then you know you're, you're already putting you're opening yourself up then for the for people to help you, you know, but you've got like yeah. you said earlier on, I think you've got to be open to it. Yeah, it make, makes people understand, and then they don't have to extend uh, understand everything. But um, when you feel you can talk about stuff and you, you're 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 going to be open about stuff, it, it it's, it's a sort of freedom that you can. Um, it, it helps you heal better. Mm. Uh, when you're closed off, we, we are meant to talk to each other. We, we when you're closed off, um, you can't fix your mind on your own. No. It, it, no, it makes you uh, <laughs> makes you go crazy because because the mind plays tricks on you and you can say I'm I'm, I'm captain of a mind but it keeps playing tricks on you mm. and that, that's why you have to talk about it and and, and people uh, have to be open about it and not every fan can help you but but um, so long um, as they don't judge you and listen that's a win. And one of the key things you said there as well, I, I, I think we touched on it earlier, is, is, is surrounding yourself with the right people, for starters. So, like, you know, if you've got friends who you don't feel comfortable, like, maybe opening up to them about certain things, it's probably yeah. worth checking, you know, are they the sort of friends that you want to be having in your life, you know? Yeah. To, to surround yourself with people who you know that, you know, if, if, if you're in trouble, if you're in need... They're going to be the type of friends that are going to be they're, they're going to be there to help you you know the community community is such an important thing i always i always talk about you know community and connection and things like that because it's i think it's the lost superpower of humanity you know even though yeah. we're living in such a infinitely connected world with you know facebook social you know instagram uh, TikTok, uh, everything we're, we're uh, closer to each other than we've ever been but at the same time we're so far, you know we're further apart because We've got super superficial relationships and superficial friendships, but yeah. you know how many of these people that we know on social media are we really going to call in a crisis? And I think you know when you've got communities that really those strong communities that look out for each other and help each other, yeah. you know your 
you not only, uh, you know, they, they say that that can promote longevity, you know, it can, you know, there's, there's different, you know, um, chemicals I think you produce when you, you've got a good sense of community that basically, you know, aid in longevity, yeah. it's not just that aspect of it. It's not just the, you know, the stress reduction and feeling happier in general, like from the endorphins released from being with other people, but they, you know, you feel safer because you're able to communicate with them. And if you've got an issue or a problem, you can talk it out with them and, and I think that's, it's just, it's such an important thing. You know, people sometimes go into their own shell. They try and deal with it themselves, which you can do, but quite often you need to actually let other people in and, and let them come on that journey with you. Yeah. And then of course, the, those are the positive effects, but it's also a community or a tribe or stuff that you call it, or the guys you hang around with. Um, um, they, they need to tell you, you need to try and tell the people uh, who are honest and tell you when you fucked up. Yeah. And they're not, they don't leave you hanging, but they just have to tell you straightforward, this is not okay what you're doing. And that, that's also uh, what friendship should be about. And that's uh, how more friendship grows, how difficult, more difficult it becomes. Mm. Yeah. To just yeah. Say, say honestly, hey, this is not okay. I think, yeah, that's that, like you said, that's just as important sometimes, isn't it? You, you don't want people who are just going to sing your praises and, and just be like, yeah, yeah, that's great. You know, what you're doing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah you're, uh, like if you're drinking excessively, you know, it's like, oh, well, look, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's okay to do it for now. You know, you're, you're going through some stuff. I mean, that's almost like, it's not, okay. yeah, I think what they're probably doing is they're telling you almost what you want to hear. Um, you know, or justify itself, justifying like the behavior, but not actually thinking, you know what, what, what you're doing right now, I think this is the wrong sort of choice for you. You know, I think you should look at this behavior and yeah, I, I no, I think it's, it is, it's very, just as important to say, you know, what you shouldn't do as what you should do. And if you need me, I'm here for you. That, that's, uh, yeah. Is there anything, uh, before we finish up now, is there anything like you would like to say to somebody? So based on your experiences, like, you know, let's say, for example, now um, you five or 10 years ago, like for someone who might be in that sort of similar sort of headspace right now, what would you say to them? Um, I put you on the spot a bit, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. I think about it. Um, keep going, yeah, keep moving. And even if the, if, if the moving is, is uh, uh, feeling uh, small, keep moving, don't stop moving. Uh, Feels sometimes feels like baby steps. Uh, the moment you stop moving, um, then mm. there's no chance to get better. Mm. Yeah, and it's a difficult space because the PTSD and stuff it, it makes you crazy sometimes. And then, mm. um, but there is a way, and and then look for the support. Yeah. No, I love that. And I and, and 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 check not not to. Uh, um, um, uh, but go go to accounts that that uh, on Instagram. Everybody and go to my account. Read about it and 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 and, and uh, uh, because there are people that feel the same way. I search for people that feel the same way and try to move forward. No, I really really like that. I really like that. Um, I, that's that. Like I, I admit the story in general. Like I, I was I only knew bits and pieces but like it is it's really really inspiring i think there's so many people that are going to listen to this and they're going to take a lot from it so thank you very much for you know for coming on and, and talking about it and telling us everybody you know telling everyone the story um with social media so you've got is it five five dot out at it on instagram yeah, yeah. cool are yeah. you on facebook or anything else as well or no no only only uh, instagram only instagram uh for everyone listening or watching five five dot out on instagram um head over to the channel so you've got links to the how people can donate yeah. In the yeah. Yeah. awesome yeah take a little look at it guys because like i said this is you know it, it's going to a worthy cause and you know i'm saying that. thank you very much for coming on like that story was just i, I know for a fact that's going to help a lot of people i hope so man and uh, thanks for having me and um for people out there um just send me in how we call it uh, a private message uh, direct message and uh i read most of them so uh mm. Stay in touch, man. 
Awesome. And then yeah. Let's talk um, talk further uh, after I run those marathons. <laughs> you took, the words, you took the words out of my mouth. I was literally just going to say we'll have to get you on again now after the uh, after the marathons and see how we're feeling yeah. and the uh, you know yeah, <laughs> what we've got. No, I, I, honestly, mate, you're going to smash it. No, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Thanks, man. Let's have a virtual Good one. Let's do it. Oosh. Yep. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. man. All right. See you. Bye.